Good evening, everyone. We will start soon. I want to make sure that if you're not speaking right now, please, everyone, mute yourselves. Can we get a lot of background noise at the moment? All McKean, we're ready to begin. Sorry, I left myself muted. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to this evening's meeting uh, about a uh, framework plan for Margaret Burroughs Beach, um, as well as uh, the 35th Street um, area. Uh, this actually has uh, been some time coming. We started planning uh, before COVID hit, um, and obviously COVID stopped a number of things, but we'd like to continue and get back to planning uh, for uh, the lakefront, including the Margaret Burroughs Beach and the 35th Street um, landing area. Um, and so I'm so happy to see so many uh, community members here and folks uh, in the local community, as well as the community at large. Uh, as we know, the beach service services uh, the local community and the greater um, Chicago community, as well as people outside of the city. And so we'd like to stop and hear from all of you. Um, we've had a couple of sessions pre-COVID. Some of you may have been a part of that. Some of you may not have been, um, but we've got um, some plans to present to you tonight. Um, and to also get your feedback. Uh, this, this is not written in stone, nor is it fully funded, right? Uh, is it? <laughs> so uh, we're working to both of those ends, right? To get as much input as we can um, to move forward and also um, to hopefully fund um, this endeavor. But I think it's a great start to have uh, these plans in front of us to, in order to get feedback from all of you um, and I look forward to the discussion. Uh, just a couple of things. First of all, I should have um, introduced myself and not assumed uh, that people knew who I am or who I am. Uh, my name is Sophia King, Alderman of the Fourth Ward. Um, uh, happy to have these assets in the community to even be able to talk about, um, but certainly it wouldn't be a plan without all of you. Um, tonight, we also have uh, members from the Park District, um, as well as some consultants who've been working um, on the feedback that they've heard thus far, and what we're going to present to you based on that feedback to, again, get further feedback uh, from you. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you um, uh, Sarah White from the Park District. Uh, before that, just some ground rules. I think what we're going to do is once the presentation is finished, uh, take questions um, by way of hand, uh, by raising your hand uh, function. I know some folks sometimes have issue with that. So if you turn your camera on and wave really hard, I think we'll, we'll be able to spot you. But if you can use the raise your hand function, that would be the best way um, to ask questions. Um, and, and be respectful in doing so. I know all of you will. And if you can, turn your video on so that we can see you. So without further ado, I will turn it over uh, to the Park Trist District, uh, to uh, Sarah White um, from the Park District. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman. Um, thanks everyone so much for having us today. We are thrilled to be back here to share our plans with you after almost 
two years already. So um, bear with me a moment. I'm going to share my screen. Um, all right, can I think that should be showing up now. So um, we are here today to share progress on our uh, draft framework plan for Margaret Burroughs Beach. Um, and so tonight we want to uh, provide an overview of the framework plan, get everybody kind of refreshed on what we looked at, where we're at with the plan, um, and talk a little bit about our planning process. Uh, we want to review previous community engagement feedback that we received um, over the past couple of years. We want to present our draft final framework plan strategies, including design concepts for the beach house um, at Margaret Burroughs Beach and for the landing at the 35th Street Bridge. Um, and finally, we want to answer any questions you may have and gather any final and additional feedback on the plan so we can sharpen our pencils and get things polished up and start thinking about how we can get some of these things implemented. So tonight, um, I'm going to provide just a quick project overview and get everybody kind of reoriented uh, to the framework plan and the process. And then I'm going to turn the presentation over to our partners at Site Design Group who've done a fabulous job helping us kind of communicate uh, our our proposed plans um, for the area based on feedback we've received so far. Um, so you will hear tonight about two different focus areas of the plan, like I mentioned, Margaret Burroughs Beach area and the 35th Street Bridge Landing. Those are kind of our, our key focus areas. Um, we'll talk some specifically about access drive improvements for the beach. Um, we'll take your questions and then we'll talk a little bit about next steps. So as some of you may remember, um, our study area is just looking at kind of a, a key central portion of Burnham Park. So um, the Burnham Park itself is 654 acres, and it runs from 12th Street to 75th Street. Our framework plan is really looking at the central portion between McCormick Place and 43rd Street. Um, we chose this location to look at because there have been a number of improvements very recently that have happened within the study area, including a new parking area, improvements to the harbor, the lakefront trail separation, um, the development of the Burnham Wildlife Corridor, and the new pedestrian bridge landing, or the new pedestrian bridges at 35th, 41st, and 43rd. Um, there's also, the beach itself has also been extremely popular over the last few years pre-COVID and um, the concession has been very successful and popular. So um, we're looking at a plan for this area that can kind of manage all of these different user groups and needs um, and really kind of make the, the study area even more successful um, moving forward. So we specifically looked at parking and circulation issues in the area. We looked at new access points to the, to the lakefront and how we can make those even better. Um, we thought about the Michael Reese development and the impact that that development might have um, on congestion and use of the area in the future. And we looked at just how to make the popular Margaret Burroughs Beach even better than it is today. Oop, and I lost my PowerPoint, sorry guys. Oh, Cassandra, can you pull a, pull a show up maybe? I don't know what's going on, but mine stopped. Sorry guys, I'll, I'll keep chatting while Cassandra pulls that up. So um, the purpose of our framework plan um, is to create a long-term planning document for the central portion of Burnham. Thank you, thank you, Cassandra, for the central portion of Burnham Park um, that responds to the needs that are there today and um, Kind of anticipate some of the needs in the future. Um, so our plan will, when it's done, will outline specific recommendations for the lakefront and will provide anticipated order of magnitude costs um, for these different projects. So um, when funding does become available, we'll be kind of ready with projects teed up um, so that we can start implementing as soon as possible. Yeah, it seemed like they helped you out. I'm sorry, could someone uh, please mute them? Thank you very much. Um, so our planning process was uh, three phases, consisted of three phases, a program and site analysis phase. And so at the at the conclusion of that phase is when we checked in with um, the community last time in March, 2020. Um, concept development phase, which we undertook before kind of a brief pause um, over in, in quarantine times. And finally, the final framework plan phase, which we're at right now, um, where we're going to present our concepts and um, get some feedback from you folks and then polish up and finalize the framework plan. 
Next slide, please. So just a brief refresher on community engagement. Um, so our community engagement so far has consisted of stakeholder um, interviews and chats with CPD staff, including our revenue department, um, the folks that kind of manage the concessionaires in the area, our natural resources part department, the folks that um, manage the natural areas in the study area, and also the arts and cultural programming, um, our security folks, our programming folks, and our trades groups. We also talked to some outside stakeholders, including our, C our park district concession and parking management people, um, the folks that kind of assist our revenue department with concessions and so forth in the study area. We talked to Westrack and the harbor manager and talked about their operations. We talked to the concessionaire at Pier 31 to, to better understand their needs um, as the beach kind of grows in popularity. And we also talked to our partners at CARA, the Chicago Area Runners Association, and ATA, the Active Transportation Alliance, to understand a little bit more about how trail users um, use the area. Um, as I mentioned, we conducted our first public meeting at Mandrake Park at, uh, in March, uh, March 28th, 2019. So that was just on the cusp of um, the lockdown. So we, we did do an in-person meeting then. It was well attended. Um, we had a great turnout um, and some great conversations that, that informed what you'll see tonight. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned before, our first public meeting really was review, focused on reviewing our, our existing conditions and asking folks um, to help us identify issues and opportunities within the study area. Uh, next slide, please. And so what we heard, um, three categories of, um, of feedback really, recreation and programming, uh, notes, access and circulation notes and indoor facilities notes. So in terms of recreation and programming, we heard that people wanna see more passive and active recreation. So and that includes art and nature programming. Um, picnicking is very uh, popular in the area. So more programming and recreation in the area was important to people. People wanted to see more seating areas, improved lighting and additional connections to the lakefront. In terms of access and circulation, this was a big topic that we heard a lot about. Uh, we want, we, one, we heard that people wanted to see a dedicated drop-off area. So the drop-off area that's there now um, is often congested and is not functioning properly. So we looked at solutions to that. Um, we heard a lot about improving parking access and congestion. So we took a hard look at that. Um, we heard that there needs to be more wayfinding signage so people know kind of what's around them once they land um, at the lakefront in our study area. And people wanted to take us to take a serious look at addressing conflicts between the lakefront trail and beach user groups. So right now the trail passes right through the beach. Um, and in summer when the beach is busy and people are passing back and forth, um, there can be some real conflict. And finally, in terms of indoor facilities, we, turned, we heard in general that the restroom space there was not sufficient to support the beach users and was just kind of not as good as it could be. Um, so we took a look at how we could improve that with different configuration and expanded space. And we also heard um, just in general, lifeguard space could be expanded. Um, and there is right now a, a, a pretty popular junior guard program that's run out of the beach and they could use more um, dedicated indoor space for that programming. Next slide, please. And I think with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to our partners at Site Design Group they are going to run through um, the draft plan and the focus areas and fill you in on some more details of our, our, of our proposal. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so as you mentioned, I'm Cassandra Rice, project manager and landscape architect with Site Design Group. Um, we have been very involved in this process, very excited to be sharing this with you today. Um, so we'll run through kind of the, the context and then we'll start talking about the concepts for the access drive, focus area one, um, which is the beach and focus area two, which is the 35th Street Beach uh, Bridge Landing. Um, so at the start of the process, we really took a look at the entire focus area because we wanted to understand not just how our two focus areas um, work, but how the context really impacts those. Um, we took a look at how people are accessing the site, how they're getting to the site by vehicle, by transit, um, by pedestrian and bike. Um, and we looked at how those user groups are really interacting with each other on site. Sarah mentioned that we heard a lot about congestion. You'll hear me say that a couple times as we go through here. 
Um, and I think that was one of the, the biggest things that really came out of the engagement and the existing conditions assessment. Um, and while that's something that we really wanted to overcome, I think what that tells us is that this is a very, very important and popular destination. Um, I think over 40,000 people visit this beach every year. Um, and so we really wanted to make the, the beach, and, and you'll see in our concepts, we really wanted to create an environment that was going to help facilitate not just those 40,000 people, but hopefully even more than that in the future. Um, we also looked at the recreational amenities. So this area has a variety of, of recreational amenities in addition to the beach and the bridge landing. Um, it has a skate park, a basketball court, a lot of picnic areas, the harbor, um, the harbor playground. And so a lot of those um, amenities attract a lot of different user groups. Um, and then in addition, we looked at the programs and concessions. So again, Sarah mentioned the, what we heard about the indoor facility at the, the beach location, but we also took a look at the, um, the programs and the concessions as well, um, and the different types of uses and space needs and constraints um, that those user groups face. Um, and we also took a look at kind of how those user groups impact and interact with the harbor users as well um, as part of kind of the overall assessment of the study area. And so first we'll get into focus area one, which is the area around uh, Margaret Burroughs Beach and specifically the access drive as well. So for both of these focus areas, we really started to look um, first at the issues and the opportunities. Um, and so here, what we found was we had a, a lack of accessible pedestrian connections. So we can see the lakefront trail that kind of comes through here um, and it splits right here at number two to be bike and pedestrian. Um, and number one here with this lack of accessible pedestrian connections, what we were finding was that while we have those, you know, the lakefront trail and some of these sidewalks, we are also seeing a lot of people kind of walking through the grass and creating these kind of cow paths to get where they wanna go. Um, specifically here, you know, coming from the drop off and really getting down to the beach. Um, I mentioned congestion before, so that's really kind of the big issue here at this site. We have a lot of people using the trail, a lot of people coming in by vehicle. We have the drop off here in the middle. And then we also have vehicles and boats that are traveling down to the harbor as well. So a lot of people coming to this site and we really wanted to find a way to kind of clarify um, the different user groups and the different access points and access routes. Um, we also have congestion at the beach house. So the beach house here at number four, um, it's, we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail, but for the size of the facility and the number of people are, who are here um, on a regular basis in the summer, it's really not big enough to support the amount of people who patron the site. Um, and so we took a really close look at that. And then um, not only are people kind of moving around and we need to figure out how to get them to and from places, but um, we really need to look at some additional signage and wayfinding to really help people understand how many parking spaces are left, where are we going? Um, and then we'll also talk a little bit about some interpretive signage to really honor Margaret Burroughs, um, really the namesake for the beach. So some opportunities then, um, we looked at some space for picnic areas. This area has a lot of open space. Um, and so we do have the opportunity to really formalize some of those picnic spaces for user groups. Um, we also have the opportunity to formalize a ride share drop off. So number two here, um, which is a bus stop, um, it, it has enough space um, in that area to really formalize a ride share drop off to, drop off to then kind of separate the ride share versus maybe the personal vehicles um, dropping off for you know, their beach day. Um, and then in addition to those opportunities, we have, um, we have the ability to enhance pedestrian view shed and circulation. So really um, providing more space for people um, to get to the beach house, to get on the lakefront trail. Um, and then as I mentioned with the building being a little undersized for the amount of users, because of the amount of open space that we have kind of here in the center, um, we started to take a look at how we might really open that up and provide larger facilities um, for the concessions, the restroom and the other uses. So the existing beach house, uh, just to kind of remind everyone what that looks like. Um, we have the restrooms here on the left-hand side, an open, air, an open air pavilion um, in the middle, connecting it to the concessions and the lifeguard facilities. Um, so we have men's and women's restroom, kind of look at a diagram of how this area works in plan in a minute. 
Um, but really what we heard was that the restrooms, I mean, for 40,000 people, I think there are about seven stalls in each. So it's really not enough to accommodate the, the busyness that this beach faces. Um, we also have a lifeguard area that um, is undersized. It doesn't really have the types of facilities or storage or program space needed to support the lifeguard um, program here, much less the, the junior lifeguard program. Um, that's kind of on top of uh, the you know, regular lifeguards that are going to be here at the beach on a daily basis. And then the concessions, not only is it undersized for the level of service that they would like to provide, they also don't have the gas service or um, some additional utilities um, to really help them be as functional as they can be. Um, and so while we did explore some opportunities for really saving the structure itself, um, because of some of those limitations with the infrastructure and the facility, um, you'll notice in our concepts that we are really looking at some, some new purpose-built facilities that really help support this space. And as we look at the kind of diagram, as I mentioned, of um, kind of illustrating some of this congestion, um, the pink user, the pink little dots are really meant to um, signify our restroom users. So you can see, you know, we've got Kind of a limited number of stalls in here um, for 40,000 people um, to really be using. And then the concessions facility here where we have the windows on, um, so the beach is kind of paged up, so the beach would be out this way. Um, so people would come and place their orders and then really wait in this breezeway here. And so the breezeway has people coming in and out of the restrooms, people moving through the site, people accessing the drinking fountain. Um, and then finally the lifeguard station there's kind of a multi-purpose sort of space in the front with some storage in the back. Um, and so what we heard throughout the stakeholder and the community meeting feedback was um, that we would just, we would like some more space. We'd like to be able to kind of spread out and um, really to make the beach more functional for all of the people who live it. Um, and this is really a great image of just illustrating how popular this beach is during the summer. And so this is really what we, we wanna be able to more successfully accommodate here. So starting with the access drive, um, we have, you know, 31st Street that comes in and splits with some planting in between the drop off here, um, and then you can go south to the parking garage. And so the concept that we looked at was to really reconstruct the access drive to accommodate a couple different lanes um, for these different users. So coming into the site, there is um, what kind of looks like a roundabout, not really officially a roundabout, but in a way it's that sort of use um, where if you're coming to use the drop off, you can kind of bypass um, going south and really come over into the drop off space. Or um, if you are here and you find out there aren't parking spaces in the garage, um, we'll talk about some additional signage we're looking at in a bit, you can really bypass that as well and then come back out to 31st Street um, to find some parking in some of the other areas. We're also including a slip lane so that so for um, those harbor users and um, other you know parking garage users they can really bypass the drop off to really help people be able to move to and through the site a little bit easier. We also looked at the dedicated drop off ride share area on Fort Dearborn Drive so up here at one and two um, and so this is where we have the there's a bus stop currently um, so by placing this dedicated ride share it really separates um, people who are, are accessing the parking and the harbor. Um, and then we're also looking at geofencing with the surcharge. So this is already something that's very common at some of our other beaches. Um, it really helps to just control the amount of cars that are coming to and from the site. Um, this area specifically may be surcharged, but you can walk 600 feet um, to the west to access the ride share drop off without the surcharge um, in the lot that's just west of the site. Um, and then additionally maintaining that and extending the CTA bus stop to accommodate more transit ridership here as well. And for bikes and pedestrians, um, we're looking at an accessible route. So really formalizing that pathway that's already here um, that people are kind of already creating to get you down from 31st Street to the beach and the lakefront trail. Um, we're looking at accommodating more bike racks near the lakefront trail, um, so providing more opportunities for people to come visit on their bike rather than taking their car. Um, and then in addition to providing more space for bikes, also really enhancing the pedestrian connections with some refuge islands 
um, and enhancing that connection to the lakefront trail. Um, this option here, so um, currently the pedestrian and the bike circulation splits right about here and pedestrians walk past the beach house to then get down to the trail and then bikes continue along here. Um, and with the amount of people at the, the beach and again, touching on that congestion that we're hearing with a lot of people here, um, we wanted to look at an option of really keeping the pedestrians and the bikes along the lakefront trail um, with potentially kind of a, a crush zone or another hardscape pathway outside of the lakefront trail that really helps to designate portions of it for the pedestrians, portions of it for the bikes, um, and alleviate some of that busyness that's, um, that we're currently seeing with pedestrians. And then finally, wayfinding and signage. So um, as I mentioned, with the vehicular circulation in this area, and one of the things we heard in the community meeting was, you know, I, I, I come in and I get down to this space and I, I want to go park in the parking garage and I find out the public spaces are filled. And then I have to figure out how to get back in it. And that just makes it a little harder for me to access the site. And so by adding some additional wayfinding and signage, we would be able to install some real-time parking availability to help drivers really understand where they can and can't park and where there's um, the availability. And then finally looking at some slowdown signage for the lakefront trail um, to again, help with communication to all of these user groups, um, you know, where you can park, where we're gonna have a lot of people, where we want to kind of slow down and enhance the safety for users. And then getting into focus area one. So we have two concepts for this space. Um, they're a little bit different. One of them kind of looks pretty similar to what we see out there with maybe spreading it out a little bit more. Um, and the other one looks at some additional um, improvements. I think what we've heard um, so far from stakeholders is, you know, really taking a look and preferring kind of the option that spreads out the user groups. But what we really want to hear from you guys tonight is what you think. Um, and so we're presenting both of these concepts. They're kind of um, again, a vision, as uh, Alderman said, and as Sarah mentioned, the project doesn't have 100% um, funding right now. We're not building anything. It's a visioning document, um, and we're taking your feedback and really incorporating that so that we can move forward with the project. So first, we will look at this, the first concept here, which is, um, as I mentioned, kind of similar to the existing uh, layout of the site, um, where we have the the facility close to the beach here. Um, and this one is looking at a similar layout, but really expanding the lifeguard deck and separating that from the restrooms and the concessions. And so by placing that on the north side, it really provides not only more space for our lifeguards, but also better views out into the beach. This concept also looks at what we're calling a pass-through restroom structure. Um, and so rather than kind of coming in and having, you know, um, one building, one entrance, one restroom, um, this has stalls on either side of what would be kind of a central community sink area. And you would really be able to pass through um, to the different sidewalks on either side. Um, provides a little bit more openness and a little bit more flexibility. Um, we're also looking at a purpose-built concessions connected to the deck. So there is a very large, uh, very social outdoor deck area already for Pier 31. And we want to maintain that and enhance the concessions um, and bring that closer to the deck so it has a stronger relationship to it. Um, we're also looking at expanding the deck size, adding a platform stage, which is this little square right here with the X. Um, and then enclosing this with a perimeter fence. And so this really helps to support um, not only the concessions existing operations, but any sort of enhancements that they would like to make in terms of programming or additional um, food and beverage sales. For the site improvements, this is looking at um, item number one up here is replacing some of our native plantings with a picnic lawn area. So we heard throughout all of our community engagement efforts that there is a strong desire for picnic areas both in this space and in 35th uh, along 35th street bridge landing and so we have the option here to kind of um, renegotiate some of that space with natives native plantings to open that up for lawn space um, we kind of mentioned the bike parking previously with the access drive 
This has an open plaza between the restrooms and the lifeguard building. Um, so this is kind of a space for people to hang out, to wait if they're waiting on somebody who's coming by bike. Um, we have the outdoor showers here. So if you are you know, ready to leave the beach and you wanna shower and grab your bike and head out, um, this is kind of that space with some seating, benches, tables and chairs. Number five is a pergola covered public plaza. Um, so as we've been able to kind of separate these facility uses, it starts to create these spaces in between them um, for more people to sit and to hang out. Um, and in this case, looking at having that covered with a pergola um, and adding some additional seating areas really along the south side here um, that again provides views and opens up into the beach. And in terms of our signage, so we have our additional wayfinding and um, informational signage for people who are coming to the site um, in terms of how they can park and things like that. But on top of that, looking at some enhanced monument signage that really um, starts to bring the presence of the beach closer to 35th, 31st Street, um, closer to the exit uh, ramp from Lakeshore Drive and Fort Dearborn Drive. Um, and then also incorpor incorporating some interpretive signage that really celebrates the life and contributions of Margaret Burroughs um, so that we can have these kind of educational opportunities at this beach as well. And to give you kind of a, a little bit better picture of what that might look like in 3D, uh, we have a couple um, renderings where we see the lifeguard station here in the background, the restroom structure here, and the concessions in the foreground. Um, with our, our deck seating areas. And you can see all of the different kind of spaces that we can now kind of spread out, um, spread these different users out into. Um, and then looking at the view from the beach, looking in. And so really with both of these concepts, um, and sometimes it's a little hard to really communicate this in, in computer renderings or digital drawings and things like that, but we're not looking at, um, shrinking the size of the beach by any means. We're really looking at how we can kind of blur the lines between where the beach is, where our facilities are, and bring more spaces for people to gather and congregate. And so that um, you can see here where we have the seating areas in the foreground, um, the connection to the lakefront trail in the back. And so our next concept for concept number two, so this is the one where we really kind of broke away from the existing layout of the facilities and started to kind of pull things back and spread them out uh, just a little bit more. So for our facilities, again, having the lifeguard deck um, towards the north with better views out into the lake, providing kind of a dedicated space for them. Um, we have an open vestibule restroom. So rather than kind of passing through, this is a little bit more traditional where you, you know, would have one entrance and you would come into the stalls um, with some sinks here in the front. And this kind of is pulled back into um, the hill space. So um, this kind of slopes down into the facility. And then our concessions building is still, in, it's in the general vicinity of our first concept. Um, again, adjacent to our existing deck with our stage area that kind of looks out um, and any sound would kind of come out into the beach um, with our seating and enclosed um, perimeter fence for concessions. For our site improvements, we're looking at the picnic area on the north again. Um, the layout of our bike racks is a little bit different here uh, in this concept, but still accommodating one area um, that really serves for our bike parking to support the lakefront trail and our bike users. We have uh, seating areas that are scattered throughout this open plaza space with our outdoor showers. And then um, in addition to our deck for the concessions, we're also looking at a covered seating area here at number five. Um, that would also be able to have some, it could be public, um, kind of a combination of both general public seating and concessions uses. Um, and then number six, uh, adding some more seating areas for our drop off to really um, provide kind of a waiting area as people are, are waiting to be picked up or dropped off. Um, and similar to the first concept, again, making sure we're incorporating new entry signage and interpretive signage. And so in 3D, this is what the second concept would look like. You can see 
Um, the facilities are a little bit, a little bit more open, um, a little bit more distributed. Um, so we have kind of bigger areas for people to congregate, a little bit more flexible space um, for seating, for the concessions and other types of uses. So this is what it would look like looking from the beach in. And then we can go into, so this kind of next section is really just comparing the two. Um, again, a reminder for the existing conditions, what that looks like now, and the differences between the two concepts. And um, I think when we get to Q&A, if we want to come back to these slides as people have comments or thoughts about anything, we can definitely come back um, to the comparison sides as we're kind of talking through um, any, anyone's thoughts about you know, the differences between these two, these two options. and what these two look like um, as we're looking kind of from the entry drive and then from the beach. So you can see there's um, the amount of space for the indoor facilities um, is approximately the same amount of square footage um, in both concepts. And um, I think the, the difference is just the layout and the arrangement of those spaces on the site. And then next we'll get into focus area two, which is the area around the 35th Street Bridge landing. Um, so we have the 35th Street Bridge that comes over and connects into um, a, a large portion of the Burnham Wildlife Corridor. And some of the issues that we heard um, from the community and some of the things that we saw as we were doing the existing conditions is really that we have limited access to the lakefront. So you can come from the 35th Street Bridge and you really get to this kind of small picnic area um, but you really have to go quite a bit north or quite a bit south to actually get out to the lakefront itself. Um, we also saw and heard that there are limited active recreational destinations here. So we do have the basketball, basketball court that's here. The skate park is fairly close by, um, but we, we heard that we wanted kind of better access to those things. Um, and then the other thing which um, I think it's probably the highest priority for this area from what we heard is really the picnic opportunities. This is a really great site to be able to come and see views out to the lake and to be able to kind of congregate and gather here. Um, but unfortunately we have a lot of limited space for that. So some of our opportunities then are really looking at expanding those views and access, looking at some additional amenities and where we could locate them within the bridge landing area and kind of expanding that out into the natural area. Um, and then providing those direct access and the direct routes for pedestrians to uh, the shoreline. And then to really kind of support all of that because this is quite a large area, making sure that we implement some signage and some wayfinding to really help people navigate this space. So our First concept, um, or actually we have, we have one primary concept for this, uh, this specific focus area. Um, and so number one here um, is looking at new paved connections. So as we heard, we kind of had limited access to some of these existing recreational destinations. Um, and one of those specifically is the basketball court. And so looking at making stronger connections and paved connections to really formalize some of these cow paths that we were seeing as people try and make their way to these spaces. Um, we also looked at creating additional connections to the lake. Um, again, a lot of these, similar to that accessible connection on focus area one, um, a lot of these pathways were here, but they were a little, they were more informal. They were just people kind of cutting through to get to where they wanted to go. And so really we wanted to take cues from that and make sure we were formalizing it, making it safe, providing um, accessible pathways. Um, and then number three, which is really kind of the main feature of this concept is our boardwalk connection. Um, so not only do we have the bridge that comes over into an enhanced picnic space, um, but by creating this boardwalk, we're able to create that direct connection to the lake while also protecting the natural area that's there. Um, it provides the opportunity for these kind of pull-offs for gathering spaces and overlooks to help really provide um, more active and gathering space for people to um, use this part of the lakefront. 
Um, and then in addition to some of those spaces, adding some signage and wayfinding, and then along the lakefront trail, um, providing a mode buffer. And so this was, this specific intervention was kind of, um, it came from not only the community, um, but also what we heard from, you know, natural resources staff to kind of help protect the natural area and make the, the lakefront trail here feel a little bit wider by creating that buffer between the tall native plantings and the trail itself. Um, so, for our gathering spaces, kind of talked through this a little bit, but looking at enhancing the basketball court and providing a seating area to help support that, enhancing our picnic area with some tables and chairs and maybe some kind of boulder seating, um, removing some of the native plantings in lieu of lawn for enhanced picnic areas for people to be able to come out and bring their, um, their coolers and their blankets and to really hang out there. Um, and then enhancing the boardwalk with some gathering spaces and overlooks that really take advantage of these really great views out into the lake. Um, this portion of the river or of the, sorry, the lakefront um, also has uh, some gathering spaces within the Burnham Wildlife Corridor. And so that gathering space would remain um, as part of this concept. Um, we have our natural areas. So continuing to maintain those community planted areas. These are spaces that um, were part of specific programs for people within the community to come and enhance the lakefront. And so we are gonna be maintaining those, um, but in some cases we'll be relocating trees and restoring some native plantings to enhance views to the lake um, and kind of accommodate some of these different uses, um, specifically the picnic lawn areas, kind of uh, providing some balance in between lawn space and native plantings. And so um, the view of what that might look like uh, built, we have, you can see some additional bike racks here in the front with some long picnic tables um, and making that connection out into this nice overlook that really helps you look, you know, look out over the natural area to the lake um, with the boardwalk connection that weaves through the natural area. And then this picnic space here um, to help support the picnic tables. And some examples of what those boardwalks might actually look like um, with some wood decking, maybe some, some tracks material with low tow rails so you can actually really feel like you're in the natural, the, the natural area. And so a comparison of what that would look like existing and then what that would look like proposed um, with the concept on the left, on the right. All right, and with that, I will pass it back over to Sarah for the Q&A. Um, and like I said, if there's any, if we want to go back to any of the slides um, as we start to have questions, um, just let me know and I'll flip back to those. Thanks, Cassandra. Thanks, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Alderman, they didn't interrupt. Uh, no, no, I was going to just kind of let people know how to raise their hands so that we can have a conversation, um, but I also wanted to acknowledge a couple of folks who are here. Um, I know Art Richardson is on the call. Um, everybody in the community knows him, but he's hasn't moved on, but moved up as director of uh, community engagement. We're lucky to still have him around. I saw uh, Alderwoman Newsom in the audience. I don't know if she's still with us, but um, she thinks she's retired, but she's not, uh, but still part of the community. So good to see her. And also saw Miss um, Akia Chanel, who just wanted to highlight as our uh, second uh, district uh, community organizer, uh, second district uh, police community organizer, but just wanted to highlight how she's just ever present and um, we have a safer community because of her. So. I'm happy to see her and then wanted to just, you know, talk about Margaret Burroughs for a second, um, who some people know as, a, you know, a visual artist, uh, a, a poet, um, uh, founder of DeSable Museum, um, founder of Southside Arts or one of the founders, Community Arts Center, but she was a commissioner for the Park District for like 
20 years or something like that. So just want to give people some context. I'm glad to see that, you know, um, this proposal seeks to highlight her in, um, you know, in several ways. Um, just a little more context. You know, I, I remember when I first came on, um, you know, people were talking about Margaret Burroughs Beach or 31st Street Beach, um, you know, uh, as more private and, and um, you know, the harbor kind of had taken over and that wasn't the intention. And we really worked hard, you know, to open up public access to uh, the, um, to the parking garage, which it is public. So, um, and then, you know, obviously the pier took off and a number of other things. So we want to make sure that, you know, we're hearing your voices um, where this plan is concerned. Uh, I know initially, you know, the feedback and you guys responded to was, you know, people who actually live in the community wanted to be able to walk over the bridge, especially at 35th street, you know, uh, spread their blankets out and just, you know, have a picnic and, you know, making sure that this um, asset was being improved uh, with the community, the local community in mind as well, and not necessarily just people coming from other communities visiting. So, you know, within that context, um, if you guys have questions, we would love to hear from you um, or comments, um, please use the raise your hand function. Um, and we will count on call on you. I think it might be good to take the presentation down, but if people have specific questions about a particular page, as you said earlier, um, it might be good to reference that. Um, so uh, with that, if you have a question, if you can turn your video on, um, that would be great and we can call on you. Um, the first person I see is actually uh, Miss, I think it's Kazi Lampert. Do you pronounce, if I, if I butchered that, <laughs> I apologize. Um, and then, but let us know. So if you can unmute yourself and ask your question or make your statement, that would be great. Hi, Alderman Sophia King. Actually, Tony Anderson's hand was before me, so I do want to respect that. Then I raise my hand after, so I do. Yeah, want to I want to. So I, I'm hoping, folks, whoever's next will um, show their their video. Um, so that that was my first first request. Um, so we'll, we'll get to Mr. Anderson or Ms. Anderson. Um, but go ahead. Yeah, hi, um, Alderman Sophia. Yeah, thanks for doing this meeting. So I've been a Chicago resident for about 12 years. I've been living in Bronzeville for about six years. I'm by 31st and MLK. Um, my husband actually proposed to me at the Burnham Wildlife Corridor. And oh, so this wow. place is very near and dear to me. Uh, so for me, I'm also an educator. I work with youth. So we actually go to this beach once the weather gets nice, right after dinner all the time with our neighbors, community, whatnot. As an educator, I think what I'm concerned about is this meeting that happened, this one community meeting that happened on March of um, 28th of 2019 was a Thursday. I'm a teacher, I'm teaching young people all day. There's a lot of working families that go to this beach. So my, my concern is how are we engaging in getting youth voices and perspectives? There's a lot of young people in this space. Is this something they like? Is this something they want? Do families find this? plan some sort, like, is there safety? I mean, do families feel safe? Um, these are questions that my neighbors and myself, we all talk about. But most mm -hmm. importantly, um, I worry about the use of natural areas for picnic spaces, because the region that's being proposed, it's like the native plants being replaced for just plain lawn area. And I picnic all the time. It's just, I, I find that concerning. The views are not that great. You're looking at a parking lot but you're also removing native plants and those plants are taking in all that water. They have deep roots. Um, a lawn is not gonna do that. And so you're gonna get this muddy, messy lawn area with no shade, replacing trees. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty significant. And so um, the trees are beautiful. I mean, I document the region in that space because I talk about natural areas to my students. And mm -hmm. to take pictures of development, it's just gonna get pretty messy. Um, and so uh, I hope we get more community engagement going 
And so that way our neighbors can be able to speak up with children and young people can say whether they like this or not. Um, sure. Well, I appreciate your comments. I'll try and pull a couple of parts. So we, we want to hear from young people, from our elders, from you know everybody in between. So I appreciate that. And we'll uh, be mindful that perhaps, you know, we can, um, take the presentation to some schools in the area, um, especially with with Zoom. So thank you for that. And in what age do you teach? Maybe we can start with with your 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 youth. Um, to yeah, I sorry, I teach high school students. Um, oh, but there's, that's that's yeah, perfect. There's a, in the area. Um, actually, so I teach at Northside College Prep, but um, okay. there's a school right here, right oh, across sure. from me, and they're wonderful, and they're always going out to the beach, and so I think we should start from there. Yeah, so so that's that's important um, to get, um, you know, kids' perspective, and then in terms of you know just getting the message out. This literally, we started this at the height. Of when COVID was first starting. So we were just trying to get back into, um, but I do appreciate the visualization of what people, what what um, the um, park district administrators and consultants heard at that first meeting. I think it was, you know, very well attended. And so I, I see some of the people who were there here, um, but certainly we want more input. Um, and in, it, you had another comment that I wanted to respond to. Um, if you can remind me, you said about the kids and, oh, about the natural space. So as much as, you know, just to give you context, I appreciate you've been in the community, um, you know, six years, um, you know, I've been there 35 years. My kids grew up at that beach before it was, you know, a harbor and some other things. Um, and some of the feedback we heard from people who have been in the community for, you know, 20, 30 years is the natural space wasn't there first um, and that there were places for families to go and who, who didn't, you know, have money, but they had the view of the, the, the water um, and the natural spaces came later. Um, and and the, some of the feedback is that, you know, in other communities, you know, they've got the soccer fields on the lake, they've got all of this view of the lake and they came in our community and just did natural spaces. Um, and so we, we've got to, um, you know, uh, kind of look at the tension between those two. I agree that the natural um, spaces do everything that you said that they do, but there's also this, um, you know, want and, and need for folks to enjoy the beauty um, that some of the natural spaces um, prohibit them from doing. And these are folks who have been here for, you know, 30 and, you know, who have been here for some time. So we, we have to look at both of those. I think this presentation does a pretty good job and a balance of that. But, you know, I think hearing from you and from other folks will lead us to hopefully a good, um, I'm, I'm hoping not even a middle ground. I hope people are happy, you know, more so a consensus, let's just say on, on, on kind of how we should proceed, but your feedback is very well taken. And thank you. Thank you for that. Um, next, I see Ms. Robinson and I think, did we lose Ms. Anderson or Mr. Anderson? I know it's a Tony Anderson, so I'm not sure um, who that was, but. Um, certainly if, if you put your hand back up or maybe your question was answered, we can get back to you. But Ms. Robinson. Uh, yes, good evening. I just had a couple of quick things. Um, question about the perimeter fencing. I don't know if that exists currently, but I, I was confused about how that would work. Um, I also thought that in terms of signage that we really need to start having more signage around transportation. Uh, that, you know, if you are coming for the first time, you are really confused and, you know, you're, you end up going to the, uh, the boat dock and dry dock and all of that when you don't need to. Um, I also think that we should plan ahead for the e-scooters that are coming. I do recognize that the scooters will not be allowed on the lakefront trail, but there's such planning, as you know, they just did that licensing on 
February the 18th. And so there's such a focus on these equity zones that we need to really anticipate these e-scooters being a way for people to get to the beach. Also, I think that in terms of buffering, some of what we're talking about, which is the real problem of transportation, traffic, parking, you know, going across the um, bike lanes, I think we got to hit that harder in terms of recommendations and solutions in this presentation. The, I saw today the new 31st Street uh, commitment for the 30, 31st Street uh, bus. Uh, which basically stops and turns around at King Drive. And I think we need to you know, recognize that we're encouraging people to use the bus and that we may need to have some type of micro transit or something uh, at that King Drive drop off. Um, maybe it's just the weekends. And then when we were talking about you know, uh, reducing some of this, uh, I, I'm looking at you know, I'm, I'm interested in whether or not like the 41st Street Beach happens to be underutilized or not. It appears that way to me, particularly for people who are motorists that are just coming to this beach as a destination who do not see the option of the 41st Street Beach. They know that there's an Oakwood uh, 39th Street exit parking and there's activities there. But because you have to then walk to see the 41st Street Beach, I don't think that that is enough of a offering, particularly for motorists who, you know, are just trying to come to a destination. But I did want to compliment you on the, the concepts because I thought moving the lifeguard station, I know you're probably polling us for that, but the lifeguard station moving that further north was smart. I would be a proponent for uh, the restroom concept that continues to uh, divide what is one side for beachgoers and another side for, you know, trail and bikers. Uh, it's just a, a whole difference. It could be even more divided inside because it's a very different kind of wet business that goes on. And then lastly, um, I was just wondering if maybe in terms of art and culture and what we were saying about Dr. Burroughs, if we might uh, look at some of the things that the Forest Preserve has been doing with these type of uh, you know, cargo containers um, that just allow for more sort of art and culture uh, projects. You know, they're nature, pro nature related projects or you know, they're kinds of things where you can even pick up gear if it's binoculars or a butterfly net, that kind of thing. But maybe we can, you know, since you're saying there's more, more uh, interest in having some more programming. Um, so at any rate, but very, very thoughtful presentation. Thank you. I appreciate that, um, Ms. Robinson. Was there anything in particular you wanted me to speak to or um, were you just making comments? I know you've made a lot of good comments and I know that the staff is, is listening um, as they did so well before, so. Um, no, but if I was, something you I guess, wanted me to speak to, I'd be happy to. No, just um, you know that I, I guess the broader point is if there if if there is one, uh, I was just responding overall. But it's that I think we can work harder on transportation solutions in this. Okay, appreciate it and all the work I know you're doing in context around this. So appreciate your feedback. Sure. Thanks. Uh, Ms. Nassif? Hi, thank you. I live in Kenwood and I'm a uh, Park District volunteer monitor down at South Shore. Lived here um, since 2005. And I also love the area we're discussing. I'm really excited that it's gonna get upgrades and I love a lot of the design ideas that you put forward. So thank you for this. Um, I noticed in the list of stakeholders for the project, uh, there wasn't a natural resources stakeholder specifically listed in the presentation, although I know you later referenced that um, you are talking to natural resources staff, which is great. And I, I totally get this tension between residents wanting to picnic and um, 
nature lovers and people looking for a respite from the density and noise and chaos of urban life, really appreciating that the Burnham Wildlife Corridor is stretching south. And I know I'm one of those people. I spent my last wedding anniversary right there. So, um, so I have a similar experience to Aisha. And uh, when I hear about picnic areas needing to be turf grass, I wonder if that is something where the natural resources staff and the park planning staff could come together and, and think about the strong humid heat of a summer day and what mature tree shade could do for picnickers and how um, there might be a balance that could be struck in this area. Um, I love the boardwalk idea. I think that that's an excellent way of finding a balance between the natural area and the needs of the community. And um, I don't think it has to be one or the other. I wonder if there's room for nuance in this um, kind of brush up against the two communities and the two different interest groups that keep coming up over and over again. And I think that, you know, if you're, you're a picnicker, it doesn't mean you don't want to picnic up against beautiful wildflowers and under a gorgeous oak tree. And um, I just hope that uh, maybe in the design plan, some of that nuance could be preserved or incorporated. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, good question. I, again, I, I think that this is a good balance between the two. So I think there's, and, and I guess I should ask for clarification because I hear people say turf. Um, turf is in natural green grass or turf is in handmade turf? Are you- Oh, speaking? turf means the stuff where they mow and, and till the soil and then lay down um, grass that's grown in agro, like as an agro business and then put down by landscapers and turned into something that's used as a recreational area, something we're all used to seeing in a, in a kind of perfect green lawn. Yeah, no, that that's, I hope that's not what they're talking about. They're just talking about the natural green grass that was there before they planted the, the natural areas, so. And yeah. so the tree cover, when I look at like the- Yeah, we're, we're not talking about cutting down trees. We're, we're talking yeah. about having, so for instance, you know, there are folks who live right at 35th Street who just may wanna have a barbecue right across the street. There's not an area where the natural growth isn't so tall where they just can't, you know, lay down a, a picnic table and do that. So we're not talking about bringing artificial turf um, we're talking about the green grass that was there before the natural grass or the natural areas were grown um, strategically um, at some point. I can't remember how yeah. many years ago. So just want to clarify I totally, that. Yeah, I totally hear what you're saying. I think that when you start talking about quote unquote natural green grass, anything that's like three inches that looks green that gets mowed is pretty much turf. So, uh, you know, it's, I just, I would love for it just to be an ongoing conversation and um, sure. having the idea of picnicking near the flowers and the trees being something that's a positive rather than a really hard delineated kind of everybody in their silos type of thing. Sure. And thank and you. As I've said, we're, we're looking at both and I hear both sides and, um, you know, I think hopefully we'll come to a good uh, consensus. But thank you very much for your, your comments. Uh, Mr. Bazukas, Barzukas, are you able to turn your video on? Mr. Barzukas? Okay, we'll go to Ms. Willis first, I think. Hi. Um, Hi. Um, I am a uh, resident of North Kenwood, Oakland, have been down here for over 20 years. And um, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm sympathetic and understanding of, of some of the previous um, commenters about um, the natural areas versus, you know, turf, which is sod, which is grass. 
um, for picnickers. But I understand, you know, that there's got to be this this balance. So I guess that um, I have a couple of comments. One is that one of the previous um, uh, audience members that spoke talked about 41st Street Beach and how that's a little bit underutilized. Um, I'm always concerned when we start chipping away at one of our, our greatest natural resource, which, which is the lakefront. Uh, you know, when we start chipping away at it and saying, well, now we have to bring in, you know, more people oriented um, activities and, you know, things versus, uh, versus the natural landscape. Um, because personally, I think that one of the stakeholders, the original stakeholder of the lakefront are the migratory birds. <laughs> they're not mentioned, but they're, you know, they've, they've been there before, before everybody. Um, it's the, the lakefront at Lake Michigan is a really important part of the, um, of the Atlantic Flyway. And there's a lot of um, my, migratory bird activity and other uh, fauna too that uses the lakefront. So I say all that to say that um, if 31st Street and 31st, 35th Street beaches are a magnet for people and we need to accommodate some of those activities, instead of just chipping away at the natural plantings, which I think the park district does a really good job at, can we, if we take something away, can we shift it further south? Can we say that we're going to not develop the 41st Street Beach area as, as, um, as people oriented and activity oriented as we are making 31st and 35th Street? Um, and my question to the, I guess to the park district is, um, is there any consideration given to land nesting birds that, are, that may be on that beach early in the spring? Like everybody knows Monty and Rose, the piping plover pair up at Montrose Beach. And the park district does a really good job of protecting that nesting habitat while they're nesting. And it's not, you know, it's not for the, for the entire summer season. Does any of that activity happen at those beaches? And does the park district have a plan for kind of segregating that beach area that might be used by land nesting birds during the nesting season and then opening it up, you know, for people activity, you know, once the water gets warm enough to swim in, et cetera. I can answer this, I think, or, or as best I can. Um, I'm not aware of any piping plover activity right now, but certainly mm -hmm. that is something that the park district is, you know, really sensitive to and aware of and, and pays attention when that when that happens. So I think that if that were to happen, it's something that the park district would would take into serious consideration um, and work to protect. But I can follow up on it with our natural resources folks and see if there's more detail um, to provide and we can we can share that um, as part of a follow up. Okay. All right. Thank you, Miss Willis. I appreciate it. Um, any other questions? Oh, Mr. Neves. Hi, um, thank you so much for um, organizing this uh, this presentation, and um, I am one of the creators of La Ronda Paracata and the Wildlife uh, Corridor. And um, for uh, the community on Pilsen, Little Village, for the Latino community, we have been going there since uh, we created the the space. And for us as as um, most of the community that we bring there is like Mexican community. And like Chicago is really flat. Oops, sorry. It's really flat and it's our only little mountain that we have there. So for us, it's like really um, meaningful. And we have been celebrating their uh, Day of the Dead 
and we have like moon circles and um and uh, at la ronda paracata is on the uh a burham wildlife corridor is the the butterflies that are like uh making a circle mm -hmm. i don't know if it's between 31st yeah. street and and um and 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 35 and 35 uh bridge thank you and well um i was listening like the the uh, about the pad uh board padding that you're thinking to put there i love the idea but also takes away the experience of feeling the the ground on your feet and also kind of rest, like gets you only to walk in the pad. You know, of course we respect the, the nature there and because we we're taking children there um, to learn about the butterflies, about um, uh, different uh, uh, activities that we have there uh, to collect the, the eggs for the butterflies and, and breed them in the classrooms and stuff like that. So having that, it kind of like, I don't know, I feel like only in the places that it goes low, you know, um, where it goes low, like where it's like really muddy, we should just put that uh, padding that you are talking about there. But to me, it feels like it's, it's a whole experience to go there and be able to walk freely up and down the hill and that the whole corridor. We really enjoy it. And it was, it's just that. <laughs> yeah, just that comment. I, I enjoy it too. It's beautiful. So I appreciate your feedback. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Wardlow and Mr. Monroe, if you can um, turn your video on and go next. Yeah, um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'm excited about uh, the um, possibilities. We're, we're all here at Lake Meadows. We've been here a year now off of a 31st and I'm excited about everything that's going on around 31st and through 35th. Um, throughout the presentation, I would like to see, or I should ask, I heard a lot about basketball courts and picnic areas. I'm wondering, is there any way that the uh, design team can consider uh, other kinds of proactive programming? I, I tend to think about what's going on up north, um, volleyball, softball, other kinds of activities, uh, aside from what we see conventionally on the South side. So I'm wondering if there's a way, I think Aisha was hinting at it, I think, around engaging our youth. So when they do come to the lake, that they're engaging in not just walking and picnicking, but some kinds of activities because we have all this great lake front property, beautiful, beautiful property, and to engage them in some sorts of, or suggest it, even in the design, not just basketball, not just picnicking. I think the same thing's true for some of the seniors. I'm obviously semi-retired, but there, all of my friends are 55 and above, and we're pretty proactive, and we still have the fire in the belly, and we do a lot on the lake. And there's a lot of people that walk to the lake and they want to be more proactive. Um, some things around that that's specifically designed, if possible, to look at some program, I'm sorry, some, some sort of interactive um, designs into that space, 31st to 35th, that would suggest that it's, um, that they can engage in it as a youngster and as a senior. That's not just walking and biking, but so again, I'm thinking creatively and brainstorming. So that's one side for the design team to think outside the box of, of, of what we have and create some other stuff. That's one. For the aldermen, um, in terms of the community groups, because I noticed that the community groups, block clubs and that, and I know that between 
31st and up to 43rd, whether it's the Gap or what we're doing here at Lake Meadows or Oakwood, uh, Oakwood, Kenwood, some of the groups that I'm sure you're aware of, um, Alderman, um, to ask us, how can we uh, engage the kids and seniors in lakefront stuff, to volunteering, engaging the kids in the parks, because even in our parks, and I know I see a, a Farrah Tunks on here, um, our parks are underutilized. And, um, you know, we're not seeing enough programming things for our young people and our seniors to get involved in, except for some of the conventional stuff. And so I think it's beholding of us to challenge us to get involved in that. And I, I believe that I understand that you are an advocate, Alderman King, of um, making sure the part the uh, lake is utilized. Yeah, different. Um, if I got this right, uh, and that the public should have access access to it, visitors, um, but also the locals uh, want to have access to it as well. Um, but we also want to make sure that the park is. Um, but the parks and the, the lakeshore is engaging and um, is, uh, has some unique things, some creative things. So engage us, have us get involved with this as well, because I think we can be of value and challenge us um, as community people to, to come up with some things and come up with some programming things so that our park is not unutilized, underutilized and not just the social parks and uh, all due respects to parts of the beach as well. So a comment and a challenge uh, of both the design team and, and also the alderman as, as well as ourselves. No, I appreciate that. Um, this is the, I wouldn't say the beginning because we, we tried to start <laughs> back in, in March uh, before COVID, but certainly uh, many discussions I appreciate um, the youth, the elders, um, hearing from them, we'll strategically make sure that we do so. Um, I do want to add that, you know, hopefully people have seen, you know, what's out there um, now. They're, you know, beautiful spaces um, that are already there that we're trying to, to highlight um, as well. And if you haven't seen the butterfly space or the bird sanctuary or, you know, some of the different, um, you know, really um, attractions out there, you should, you should get out there, maybe when it's a little warmer, although uh, this past couple of days in Chicago is, is balmy summer or in, uh, making us out, in making winter. Us think it's the spring is coming. <laughs> yes. Uh, but certainly I, I agree with you, uh, Mr. Monroe. Um, and with other folks. We, we certainly want to socialize it as much as possible. We certainly want our youth um, to be engaged. Um, and so uh, those are things that we can certainly do. Um, and I, I look forward, uh, honestly, to going um, to a couple of classrooms and, you know, seeing what they envision and giving them a heads up, you know, so that they can um, put some thought into it as well. So appreciate your your comments and certainly my my elders who I consider myself in that category as well um, but um, definitely want to do uh, more engaging than not I, I do appreciate however you know the park districts listening you know at the first session that we had together um, and you know bringing back because I'm a visual person so it's 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 kind of good to react to something visual as well and to to understand that but if you haven't been there and seen some of these um you know very um what i would just call strong assets already you you need you should you should see it in context and then you know come back and say um so that might be good for the students to do as well to kind of go out there see it and and then you know what what do you envision it for how how do you see it what i what i don't want to get lost and you know what I, we were um you know strongly proponents of before is that you know once assets are built in our community that they're not really built with our community in mind um and and so i want to make sure that there's access and that we listen to people who say <laughs> you know i just 
I can't even barbecue in my, on my beach or I can't do, you know, and it wasn't really built with us in mind. Um, a lot of folks didn't know at 31st street beach, there's a, you know, a pool there. There's all types of activities that people can use on the lake. Speaking of youth that the folks who live there think it's private and, and it's not, it's public monies that paid for that. Um, and it's very public. Um, it was a private park. I mean, a parking garage they were using it as just for the harbor. So I just want to make sure that we do listen and don't discount folks who actually the live there and want to be able to walk and access um, one of the best and free assets, you know, in our um, in our community, which is you know the lakefront. So I, but I do I do hear what everybody's saying, and we certainly want. Um, especially the youth and our elders um, to get their input. Um, I see some of our elders in the community, so I do appreciate that. What is missing here is our youth, but we will directly try and engage them. I, uh, that you have my word on that, because I, I think that's a wonderful idea and I've heard it a couple times. So thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Wardlaw, we'll let you have the last um, question. Um, there are a couple questions, I think, in the chat that we'll try and get to, especially how we're going to pay for this. Park District, um, um, maybe, you know, you could leave us with that or a few words that you may have in response to some of the questions that we've had. Um, but Mr. Wardlaw? Um, how you doing? Uh, my name is Mike Wardlaw. Nice to see you again, Mr. Alderman King. Good to see you as well. Uh, Mel, I think your, your microphone is still on, by Mr. Monroe. That's my friend, too. It's good to see so many people here. I, I know um, Ms. Newsom. Um, Prentice. Um, anyway, I don't want to say a lot. I just wanted to say that I think that the concepts um, shown were great. I, I live on 30, 41st in Lake Park, right at the bottom of the first Blue Bridge that they built a couple of years ago. I so said I've seen a market change in traffic right over to 30, 41st Street Beach. So I have a particular feeling about both of them firsthand because I'm looking at that bridge, you know, and they're going to be done with the 43rd Street bridge soon right in a couple of what maybe next year or this year so i think that beach is going to start to pick up traffic more than it is now it's kind of last year for sure it was a hidden gem you know people didn't know about it It was quiet it was kind of a, a local thing um, i'm hoping that it can still stay that way to some degree because for me i've always felt like because of the previous development that 35th street was more of a tourist destination more of, you know, where people would come, where it was an actual place where you're going and you're going to do specific stuff, you know, at that spot. Whereas I don't see that with 41st Street, partly because of the parking and um, also because it's a little more localized just to get to. So I heard the comments about bypassing it for uh, major, you know, um, developments and stuff like that. But even without the major developments in the summer, you guys know there's there's concerts every weekend, so it's still being utilized during the summer. Um, festivals and stuff are going on, so they're, they're still making use of the space. As far as the renderings go, I do like the boardwalk idea. I like it for a lot of reasons. I do, I do get all the ideas of wanting to have the earth between your feet and walk into the lake, because I do that all the time, even with my dog. But there are times, like after a rain or something, that if you could walk over there on a dry boardwalk, that would be super cool. Or you could push a wheelchair on the boardwalk all the way over to the lake. You wouldn't have to go through the sand or dirt or the grass. So it would be super, um, you know, kind of clever in a way. And if you could incorporate maybe seating into one side of that boardwalk, you could take some of the pressure off of um, the, the, the picnicking congregation because you could just sit on the seating along the boardwalk and just have a little picnic for instance. So you could take some of the pressure off of that capacity, but I do like the boardwalk. I just have one thought. If you're not on the boardwalk and you're walking north-south, is the boardwalk high enough where you can like under, go under it and keep along your way? Or you have to stop and the, the boardwalk physically stops your progress north and south? So um, those things, but the main things I thought the signage. I think the signage is a big deal. If you can get nice, pretty signs honoring, you know, this legacy. Um, I think signage and lights, lights on that signage. Um, if you can do those things, I think that would make a big 
a big deal. And if you could do something about the gnat surrounding trees, that would I would be happy with that. <laughs> with that, as far as being out there in that space, because that's really the thing that keeps people off of that that land. Really, the bugs. So, if you want to tackle that problem, that would probably be a miracle itself. But the signage and um, the bugs over there in the book, the boardwalk, I think those things are really promising. But that's it. I don't, I don't want to say too much about that. I know it's late. But thank you very much. No, thank you for your comments, Mr. Wardlow. Definitely appreciate it. Um, and if we can just leave with how this may be funded or kind of what the path forward is. I know we want to have more meetings and more engagement, um, but how are we going to fund all these ideas? What's what's the path forward for that? Yeah, so that that is a great question, probably the multi-million dollar question. Um, so we don't have funding right now for any of these things, but we have a plan. And I feel like the park district, at the park district, when we have a plan, it makes our chances of getting funding for a lot of these projects um, that much better. So um, now that we have an idea of kind of what basically uh, the community wants to do and after tonight, um, this has been a really helpful conversation towards that end, um, our consultants will sharpen their pencils and help us figure out how much each of these different plan elements cost and we can start aligning these different projects with different outside funding opportunities with different internal funding opportunities. So this just really helps as a toolkit for us to figure out what we need and where we need that those resources to go. So we're working on it. All right. Anything else you'd like to leave us with? Um, just a big thank you. Um, we, you know, we've been working on this for a couple of years, and we've been really excited to to show these our ideas to the community. I think that the, the feedback we got tonight is extremely valuable. I'm looking forward to getting back together with our designers um, and rolling out our draft final plan for you all to see. So thank you very much for taking time tonight um, to learn more about what we've been up to. Thank you, Alderman, for having us. No, we appreciate you. And, and I know you will be um, available as we seek out some of the other input, especially from our youth. I, I really do want to hear from them. And, um, and then, you know, have a couple more meetings like this as we refine uh, the plan and hopefully get some money to fund it. So thank you uh, for coming. Um, thanks to everybody who showed up tonight um, and tell your neighbors about it um, so that next time we have a meeting, um, they can also join us. Um, but uh, with that, I will say good evening and thanks again for coming out.